And welcome to WHIG in the community. And we are certainly in the Wilson community today. We're at the Arts Council with Barry Page. Barry Page is the Executive Director. Hey, Barry. Hello, Sandra. How are you? I'm doing good. So you, good to see you today. It is good to see you. And you say that you're in the WHIG, the Whig Party? The Whig Party, yeah. yeah. We used to have a president <laughs> from the Whig Party. Do you remember those days? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> I got Thank you on you, that one. I'm going to get Barry for that one. I'm going to get him for that one. He had it. I was set up. <laughs> Barry, um, you are the executive director. How long have you been here? Uh, I've been here since 2006. I retired from being an elementary school principal in oh. June, and then I started here August 1st of 2006. So this makes 12 years. Wow, 12 years. Well, now tell me what the Arts Council encompasses in Wilson. Well, the Arts Council really supplies art and a better quality of life for all of the people in Wilson and Wilson County. We also do it for the region because we have several contributors who come from Rocky Mount because of our Act for Youth program and because our galleries are so wonderful. And our gallery director, uh, Miss Amy Hughes, is okay. just the most wonderful person, Jim who you'll talk to later, made a comment about how gracious she was and how welcoming she was mm -hmm. and that she just felt so, he felt so good about showing in our gallery. Right. Uh, but to get to the point, what we do is we provide experiences in the arts and in the cultural arts, all kinds of cultural, music, theater, dance, visual arts, and writing right. for the Wilson and Wilson community so that we can provide what people need to not only feed their tummies, but to right. feed their hearts. Actually, through our grassroots grants program, because we manage the grassroots grants for the county, mm -hmm. we have a, um, a, gra a, a, excuse me while I turn off this phone. That's I am fine. So that means sorry. you're busy, Barry. Yes, we, she is actually a person who I've just sold bankers holiday tickets to, and she's gonna probably bring her check to pay for those bankers holiday and tickets. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute too. <laughs> yes. But we provide we provide experiences in the arts so that we can feed the soul right. and feed the creativity of people, not just the bread and water. Well, you know, in an interview with the mayor a while back, you know, I remember him saying, "I never realized how important the arts were <laughs> until just, you know, not recently, but he said, "I I just realized it's it's just vital to bringing people to a into a community as well, Barry. Yes. I mean, people ask that when they are going into a community. What do you have to offer that will, you know, as far as the arts, what do you have to offer in the community? One of my favorite stories is one of our doctors who is an uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor, Dr. Cohen, his wife is on our board now, and she had she tells a story that when they came looking for different communities and where mm -hmm. to live Absolutely. she said show me your arts council show me your arts mm -hmm. community and that's what brought her to wilson wilson is i grew up in stanisburg which mm -hmm. is a little bit a little right. 15 minutes away mm -hmm. but wilson has been known for a community that really embraces and understands how important the arts are to people uh dr bettingfield and his Ma B, his mother, and oh, Lena May Overman, one of my great, the greatest teachers I ever had in seventh grade, um, they would make sure that we knew about the art experiences. So as a high school student, uh, back in 1967, 68, Dr. Bettingfield said I, we needed to come and visit the Arts Council. So I came to the Arts Council in high school and have had a relationship with the Arts Council since my high school careers. Although, since my high school career, excuse me. Um, although I did not live here the entire time, mm -hmm. I had, I, from that early experience, I saw that other people embraced it and I knew that it must be important. So. I have been a contributor and a part of the Arts Council of Wilson probably since I was 17 years old. Wow. Now, the Edna Boykin Center falls under this umbrella kind of, of the Arts Council. How does that work? Well, that's, that's, the, oh, that's the most fun part of, that, of my job, and I say that with tongue in cheek. We manage the Wilson Arts Center, and this is a three-story building on one side and a two-story building on this side. Okay. This is the Wilson Arts Center, and it is the 1903 
oldest remaining bank, oldest remaining building. That was uh, a bank. That was Branch Banking and Trust Company. Right. And they gave it to the city, and the city lets us manage it wow. and pay for using it, but they don't charge us rental. And the... Um, then we also manage the Edna Boykin Cultural Arts Center. That is such a nice facility. It's beautiful. It is. It really is. It was re it was renovated back in nineteen well in nineteen ninety six. They bought it in nineteen eighty nine and it took us from eighty nine until ninety six to renovate the building because we did not just tear it down and set up a new theater right. what we did was we took the elements from the historic part of the theater right. recreated them and even where the areas are new it has segments that are the molding from the inside well, of the theater yeah. that is Absolutely. carried out yeah you've been into the I've Hammond been in there gallery. several times yeah, oh the Hammond gallery no the Hammond gallery is right in front of the theater that's okay. the lobby of the theater that's the lobby. See, I didn't know it was called that. You're educating us today. <laughs> I have been in the lobby, yes. I have been to shows there. Fantastic. Oh, and the acoustics are incredible. Yeah. You don't have to, you just sing, and it, you don't need a microphone. It'll go all the way to the back of the auditorium without even... Do a that again. You sing as well. <laughs> That's another hidden secret that I found out about you. Yeah, I enjoy singing. I, uh, for, I was an educator, and while I was educating, I became a principal, um, and when I was at West Haven Presbyterian Church in Rocky Mount, I was there for tw 10 years. And then I was at First Presbyterian Church for 12 years as a choir director. And then I moved over here and I had about a six month sabbatical when I wasn't gonna do it anymore. I was gonna try to concentrate on being a principal, but I was singing with First Christian Church at the time. And so I be became, they hired me to be their choir director and I was there for 10 years. So altogether, it's about 30, 31 years in education, and if you add on the time when I was in Greensboro and was a choir director, it's 38 years as a choir director before I finally said, wow. I'm too old. I tell you, surgery does wonderful. This facelift, uh, you know, for 78, <laughs> I look good. <laughs> That's funny. Now, behind us, yes. the Whirly Gigs. Let's talk about the Whirly Gigs. Well, this is Vollis Simpson. This is the permanent collection that is owned by Downtown Development and the Downtown Properties. Uh, they were purchased from that old machine shop out on uh, Willing Worker Road. Well, I call it Willing Worker Road, but it's actually Willing Worker Road and Wiggins Mill Road. Mm -hmm. And there's that girl who just bought her banker's holiday tickets from me. <laughs> that was Robin Hooser who was calling by phone. The she works for the Wilson Tobbs. Oh, she Ro is. Oh, Robin. Robin. Hello, Robin. Robin works for the Wilson Tobbs. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Robin. <laughs> you can see it's it's very alive and well in the Arts Council today. I love it. Yes, we have the artists are coming in for the November fifteenth show, but I'll get back on task. These are the permanent collection from Downtown Development and Downtown Properties, and they are all Vollis Simpson Whirly gigs. You can see where he has actually. That is incredible. Look at that. Signed his name and 07. 07. Some of these go back as far as 03. Yes, see, and 08. Yes. 09. And uh, we display them here. <clears throat> and in the future, they will probably dis be displayed in the Conservation Center that is right. near the Whirly Gig Park that will be starting in 2013. I was going to say, when is that going to open? I'm very excited about that. It's, it's supposed to open in November 2013. Oh. Okay. A year from today. A year from today. Okay. Is that kind of under your watch too? How does that I work? I will tell you that the Arts Council was instrumental and we are a partner, but I must okay. say that Downtown Development and Lisa Anderson, who's a member of the board of the North Carolina Arts Council, and Henry Walston, who is president of Downtown Property, a uh, Downtown Development. Uh, excuse me, don't want to get them confused. He's president of Downtown Development, which is an all-volunteer board. Really got this together, and in a party at Lisa Anderson's house, when Edna Earl Boykin was sitting there with flowers in her hair, being a flower child, because we were celebrating the 40th anniversary of Woodstock, we all decided to buy Bala Simpson's 39 whirly gigs, some that are 40 and 50 feet high, or maybe 30 feet high. They say I exaggerate, but I don't think so. I think they're 100 <laughs> feet high. The, um, but they, they bought all of these, and now they're restoring them. 
and they'll be placed in the park in 2013. Actually, they'll be placed wow. slowly uh, after 2013 because they are so huge. Uh, Stancil is going to be footing them for us, and you have to pour a concrete that may be five feet with rebarb. They're huge, and they're wonderful, and this is just his indoor whirly gigs, and this is a project that Wilson is so, so proud of, and the Arts Council of Wilson is very happy that we were a part of the beginning, and we're still partner with them to get it done. Well, you know, you really have to come to Wilson to know what a whirly, a whirly gig is. When we were announcing on TV that the Whirly Gig Festival was coming, everybody was saying, what is a whirly gig? <laughs> well, you know what? I can't even begin to tell you. You have to come here to see it. It is the most amazing thing. And Wilson is so fortunate because it's such a unique thing for you. Oh, it is a unique thing. And Vallis doesn't call them whirly gigs. He calls them windmills. Windmills? Yes. Okay. He started making them really during the Second World War when he was a machinist with the uh, Air Force. Mm -hmm. And he, he was in the, oh gosh, he was on an island in the Pacific and I forget the name of it. He's told me many times. Okay. And he would use them, use them parts from the airplanes to help dry the clothes. Mm -hmm. And so what he, what he did, he would pitter, uh, piddle with them. And then when he came back home from the war, he owned Simpson Machine Shop. And that's where we all took our, I'm a, I'm a farm boy. I grew up on the farm and it's hard to take that that's away. That's a good from thing. Me. Yeah, my, red, my, uh, my countryness comes out a whole lot. You know, just right now, here and then. If you heard my brother, he talks just like this. But I try to use good English when I am on TV or talking on the You're doing radio. a good job, Barry. Well, thank you. And uh, we have a little a finger whirling in the air. That is a whirly gig. Anything that moves is a whirly gig. Okay. <laughs> and, well, with that being said, we're going to take a break. I think we're getting the sign. We're going to take a break. Come back. We're going to talk to Jim Wood. Carolina Jewelry Buyer is now Carolina Jewelry Pawn and Gun, and they want to be your one-stop holiday shop. You can get a loan on your new hunting rifle or handgun. They also buy and sell small electronics and video game consoles. If you could use a little extra cash this holiday season, trade in your old coins and jewelry for cash. And Carolina Jewelry Pawn and Gun still has a large selection of new jewelry and a knowledgeable staff to help you out. So visit them in Rocky Mountain at 2522 Sunset Avenue or call 252-443-1668. That's Carolina Jewelry Pawn and Gun on Sunset Avenue across from Walgreens in Rocky Mount. Gentlemen, if you enjoy dressing well, you need to visit Cannon's Men's Shop. You deserve the best, and at Cannon's we have the best. Join us now for our pre-Christmas sale. Suits starting at $99.99 and up. Sweaters starting at $29.99 and a special half price on a select group of shoes. And at Cannons, we have the best selection of Stacy Adam ties, Stacy Adam shoes and accessories, and of course, the best prices. Start your son dressing well early. We have boys and young men suits, sizes 2 to 20. Custom tuxedos available for sale or rent. And ladies, give your man the best. A present from Cannons from you means so much more. And we have gift certificates for your convenience. Three locations, Rocky Mount, Wilson, and Goldsboro. And layaways are always available at Cannons. And Barry, we're having so much fun here today. You have a guest with you right now. Oh, yes, we do. We have several guests right now, but the one that we want to talk to is Jim Wood from the Rocky Mount area. He's an artist that will be appearing in our holiday invitational that is for uh, contributors on November the 15th. That's when we open it. And then after that, it's for the public, and they'll be able to see Jim Wood at his art. Wow. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Jim. I've been painting most of my life. I was a banker most of my life, and then I painted on the side. And then uh, I took early retirement 15 years ago and uh, have painted <laughs> very seriously for <clears throat> many years now. And uh, not making a lot of money, but I'm having a wonderful time. So very prolific. I don't try to crank them out, but I, I do a lot, of, a lot of paintings. Well, I think when you're talking about fine art, Jim, 
you want to get to the fine art. So that is why you don't crank them out like they crank out money. You crank them out like they crank out fine artwork. Am I right about right. that? Right. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Lawyers call that leading the witness. Exactly. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and your work will be on display right here at the Arts Council. That's correct, yes. And you'll be here on the 15th for our contributors to meet them, won't you? Uh, yes, I will. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Jim, thank you for visiting with us today. Oh, and sure. your friends from Rocky Mount can come over to Wilson. Sure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Enjoy thank you so much. With you. Now we're going to meet another artist that's here at the Arts Council, Sue Owens. Hey, Sue. Hey. Glad to be here. I'm so glad you're here. We are scarved. Yes, we are. I have been scarved <laughs> for life. Look at I that. think it's wonderful. Let Sue tell you how she came to come to Wilson, the hub of the art community. How'd you get here? Well, Amy Hughes invited me uh, from the Carrie Lazy Days Fair in uh at this past August. She saw my uh, display, said, these are lovely. I want I wanted to get you in uh, to Wilson. So she invited me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that wonderful? And this is our holiday invitational, so we can invite anyone we would like to come. And we only invite those people that we really like. They're very special, oh, Sue. Invitation. <laughs> you should feel privileged. I do. I truly do. She, she mentioned Amy Hughes. Tell me a little bit about your impression of Amy when you met her. Well, I think uh, she's very interested in the artists, yes. and she is a team player, and she wants the best for anyone in this gallery. And I think she's full of new and fun ideas. Ah, fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, now, tell us, tell us about the scarves. These scarves are made from 100% made from silk, silk. Uh, and I buy these, these silks. They're absolutely white from California. They're already hemmed. And it takes me two days from the white scarf to a finished product. Two days is all? Two days, yes. What I do is I design the, the, the design and draw it on with actually a pencil. And then I come in with resist and outline my design. And then with a paintbrush and dye, I paint in the pink or the green and let it sit for one day. The next day, I steam it on my stove for one hour to set the dye into the silk fiber, iron it, and it's good to go. It is, is beautiful. Wonderful. It is fun. wonderful. Yes. A lot of fun to do. And, and you I sell like these. Yes. Oh, I do too. It matches Blue very. Is my signature Look at color. that. <laughs> you match. <laughs> and I match. I'll tell you what, this is absolutely beautiful. Now, you sell them these here at the gallery. I am selling them at the Christmas event, and I hope to continue. Amy and I were talking about this uh, into the next year. So I'm hoping to bring ah. my spring line here also. Our next event is a holiday invitational that begins on November the 15th okay. and from 6 to 8 our contributors and it only costs $25 to contribute or $50 to contribute if you're a if you're a couple or a family will be invited that night from 6 to 8 and then on the 16th we open to the entire public and we run all the way to December 23rd. It's the holiday invitational, which incorporates that holiday that gets lost, Thanksgiving, because right. we're so thankful for these wonderful artists that come that in. That is the day. truth. Thank you so much. <laughs> and again, thank you for the invitation. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And thank you, Sue, for what you do, and, and thank you for being with us today. And again, we're having so much fun here at the art, the Wilson Arts Council. Let's let's make sure we say that the Wilson Arts Council. Barry, you're just you've been loads of fun today. Thank you so much. And and we're going to talk about the schedule, what's coming up, the different events. You've got a lot of events coming up. You got Bankers Holiday. Oh yes, we have Bankers Holiday, which is actually one month from today. today. Why is it called that? Because all the bankers get together and they sponsor. They pay for the expenses. And then all of the profits from the sales of the tickets and from the live auction or the 50-50 raffle or the giveaway car this year that we're going to be giving away a car oh. from Chris Vester. Yeah, he's, you can get choose between a Corolla, an Accord, or a Chevrolet Cruze. He'll let you choose the car that you want. There are only 600 tickets, so... One out of 600 is a lot better of a chance than you get from the North Carolina Lottery. The Arts Council of Wilson Lottery is the best place to invest your, invest your money to get the, the quality return that you can get. And the art, now this is the largest fundraiser that the Arts Council does, is that correct? Yes, so, yes ma'am. Uh, at the end of the year, we, 
we partner really with the city because they have first Fridays on the lawn. After that, they do the Whirly Geek Festival, and then we get the first Friday of December. It's always the first Friday of December. Okay, this year's December 7th. Yes, right, December 7th, and it, the tickets are $50, and you will be here. You can be here from, starts around 6.30 and ends at 12.30. And I can tell you, it'll be six hours of fun, fun, food, and fun. And it's here at the Arts Council. It is here in the Arts Council and at a pavilion that we erect out in the Barn Street parking lot. Wow. Yeah. How much fun is that? It is, it, it's more fun than fifty dollars because you have four caterers, so you get four dinners. I and saw that you have Jacks, you have Quints, you have. See, I've done my homework a little bit. That's right. Jacks and Quint, you've got all these wonderful restaurants. Catherine, Catherine Mears, Kitty Mears Catering, and Soco. Jeremy Law, who has Soco Southern Comfort, out on one fourteen. That's at near Black Creek. He is the fourth caterer that we have, and then we have wine from Grape Nuts, and we have alcohol we have to buy because the Aunt Bertha's Cafe, otherwise known as the ABC Store. I understand. Yeah, they make us buy that. But Harris Teeter gives us all of our our, our mixers, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's just wonderful how the community comes together to support that quality of life that the Arts Council can bring. That is wonderful. Now, you've also got some great events at the Boykin Center. It's a Wonderful Life is coming. That's right. Playhouse is one of our arts organizations, and the Playhouse right now is doing a radio version of It's a Wonderful Life. So it's It's, it's a Wonderful Life, the radio version to be just What does like that mean? Well, it means that on stage they're going to be set up like a radio station, just like okay. just like Garrison Keeler and Prairie Home Companion, but okay. you set it up on the stage, and it's the way A Wonderful Life was originally done. The story was originally told on radio, so you have it set up there, and you have everything so that... Uh, all the sound, you can see all the sounds that are coming out, where the sounds are coming, why they're making them, and you get to see the actors uh, portraying that wonderful story of that banker, mm -hmm. Mr. Bailey, and the little bell that rang because an angel got their wings. Ah, that makes me. That one always chokes me up. I love that story. <laughs> that, that, that's going to be great. And don't don't you do? Didn't you do that last year as well? Uh, no, last year we did. The best Christmas pageant ever. That's right. I saw the signs. I knew you. Yes, we had. Some kind of Christmas. At, well, also, I tell you, if you want to go through the whole schedule on the 15th and then beginning the 16th, it's a holiday invitational. After that, it's Thanksgiving. So please make sure that you go to your Thanksgiving meal. Absolutely. The next weekend is December the 1st, and that is what we call the Polar Express, and it's children coming here, and they get to see a real, the Lionel Polar Express train, that one that was done just for the Polar Express with all the characters on it, and it'll be upstairs in our cook gallery, our children's gallery, and it, it is a wonderful train, and I have seen it. It's being donated by Dr. Bob Stone, and it has the village, it has the North Pole, it has the bell, it has... Wow! <laughs> that's going to be exciting. That's right. That's on December the 1st. And then the next weekend, <clears throat> we have two things going on. On Friday night, we have holiday... We, excuse me, we have Banker's Holiday, and we're going to auction off that train. That train will be one of the auction items. Oh, really? <clears throat> yes, it is. That is exciting. And following the Banker's Holiday, on Saturday night... Toe to Toe is doing what? The Nutcracker. The Nutcracker. Oh, and that's Toe to Toe, Toe to Toe Dance right here in Wilson. Yes, ma'am. In the theater, they'll be in the theater, and then the following weekend is the Grinch. How the Grinch stole Christmas, and then the next weekend is Christmas, and so I go and take a break. Truth. Oh my word. Just so much to do. You know, I don't want to hear anybody say there's nothing to do. But that's right. Tomorrow night, there are three different things to do. And thank you so much for coming over to Wilson to the Hammond it's Gallery. Fun. Absolutely. Yes. Well, yeah, the Hammond Gallery is great. Yeah. It is. Because tomorrow night, you'll be there, right? I'll be there. Fantastic. And there's an event there tomorrow night that is a fundraising event for the Rotary Club. But it's actually a fun and very much a... Uh, entertainment for folks mm -hmm. but we also have a grassroots grant where some choirs are working and singing at first presbyterian and then uh, i have to also i'm singing for the Meth my mother-in-law's methodist church okay yeah so i have a whole lot going on tomorrow night i 
there is most of the time from Thursday through Sunday, there are at least two activities or three activities that I can give you to do in Wilson and the surrounding area. But there's always, when the days are slow, it's always the best thing to come to the Arts Council of Wilson, Absolutely. go to the galleries, go to the Conservation Center, and then always take in whatever is happening at the Edna Boykin Cultural Center. What a relaxing thing to do, to come down here to the Arts Council and just browse and look at this wonderful artwork. And they are busy today getting it together for the next show, aren't they? Yes, ma'am. Our holiday invitational. Okay. November 15th. That's ma'am. <laughs> All right. All right, Barry, thank you so much. I've had so much fun over here, and I'm coming back. Thank you, Sandra, and I've had a wonderful time. You have thank been you. so easy to talk to. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. You as well, Barry. And we're here at the Wilson Arts Council, WHIG in the community. Thank you so much for watching.